queued up for a simulator battle in the Chaffee. Simulator is one of the three modes that you have available. Um, the three modes are ranked from um, arcade to realistic to simulator in ascending, I'd say, difficulty and realism. Simulator being the most realistic of the three <coughs> differentiates it itself from the others um, mainly by two things. I'd say the most prominent feature is that there are no markers for enemy tanks whatsoever. So to find an enemy to shoot at, you actually have to visually see and identify it, which um, adds a lot to, in my opinion, to um, the importance of movement of tanks, to the importance of positioning um, so that you gain an advantage of getting the first shot. And also there's a lot more damage from the shots, so getting the first shot might often mean that you win the engagement because you cripple or even outright kill the enemy with a first shot oftentimes, especially when you have flanked them and shot at them from behind at their unarmored spots or at the engine or something like that, because shooting an enemy tank in the engine will most most of the time lead to them being put on fire, and fire usually has pretty catastro catastrophic outcomes. Even if the enemy does have a fire extinguisher, uh, only like one or two seconds of fire will usually render the en engine ineffective and have the enemy tank stationary and also unable to turn to face you with with its hull at least so that you can shoot at its exposed rear once more and typically kill it. So um, positioning is a lot more important in simulator battles than it is in the other modes. Whereas um, while you still see on the uh, minimap, you still see an icon for an enemy tank that your crew has spotted. You still need to pinpoint the enemy's location, which oftentimes is not easy since engagement distances are much uh, longer than in World of Tanks. So if you even if you see an enemy like say at 90 degrees on the minimap, but he's like 600, 700 meters away, it can be very hard to spot them through the foliage, and they might be able to get one or even two shots off at you before you even are able to see where they are which most times will end up you being killed and then being surviving um, unharmed basically. So this is why especially in the chaff or in light tanks in general I prefer simulator battle but I prefer it with other tanks as well because like I said it really um, favors good maneuvering, good positioning and um, good strategic overview of the flow of the battle so that um, as opposed word to um, realistic or arcade mode where you have the icon of the enemy tag, tank pop up in the 3D view as soon as you spot them you will know where to fire and it's just um, about being able to aim your shot and, and hit it reliably so that, that matters and so I think that simulator battle is really the most satisfying of the three um, like in realistic in simulator battle you also have to compensate for the um, shell drop so if you're shooting at a target that is further away you'll have to aim uh, above the target so that your shell actually hits where you want it to hit and not fall below where you want it to hit. Whereas in arcade mode that will, like in World of Tanks, be automatically compensated and your shell will hit where your aiming reticle is pointed at. So that, combined with the spotting mechanics, adds another level of complexity and skill to the game because again hitting the first shot will often be deciding the engagement and if you can reliably range your target visually at like ranges of 600 or more meters and hit hit a target of that at that range with your first shot while they might miss it you might oftentimes win the engagement just because of that and as you can see this is a perfect example of why simulator battles is not the favorite of many players which is the long queue times like you see I'm waiting in queue for five minutes here which is kind of uncommon. I like the last three games I got for all within under a minute. So I'm going to quickly requeue here. I'm not sure if it's going to make any difference. Also going to use this opportunity to show you a nice little feature of showing the internal modules of the tank so you know what you need to not expose to your enemy. You can see that there are some ammunition racks in the back. Unfortunately this doesn't stay up when I'm in queue. I was thinking I could show you that while I'm in queue. So you can see that in the mostly the back half of the turret, most of the ammunition racks of the chaffee were placed, and the front was not as much full of ammo. So, if you um, like, f if you peek out of a corner, uh, from a corner, it might make sense to just to drive out pretty much straight out and um, expose your frontal half of the tank because there seems to be almost no ammo in there. On the other hand, then though you might get your transmission shot out 
and being able to move back into cover and might die of that anyway. So, I mean, just like in usual with light tanks, with a chaffy, it's best to not get shot at all because um, you don't really have a lot of armor and you can't expect to reliably bounce a lot of shells. Even though, because of the sloping, which is pretty strong in the front, you will still bounce a good amount of shots when an enemy is shooting from at you from an angle or while you're on the move that they cannot aim for your weak spot, of which there are many. And if you are engaging in a prolonged static engagement, you can definitely expect that any enemy armor will um, beat your armor in the, in, in the uh, term of the exchange over like two or three minutes, uh, two or three shots, sorry. Um, you will definitely lose the engagement if you just fight it out basically like that. And you should almost never do that and usually relocate and try to find another position where the enemy has not used, does not have you spotted and does not get to trade shots with you, but you get to get one or two shots off before they can react. So, that's that. Um, another couple quick comments on the interface which um, compared to World of Tanks has some um, strong differences in terms of what, what the slots are. I'm not going to go over um, battle rating or matchmaking right now, but um, first of all I'm going to um, count on the slots down here, which is, you see I have five slots here, which does not mean I own five tanks, it means I have five crews available to man vehicles. So the slots here do not correspond to tanks, the slots correspond to crews. Every slot corresponds to a full crew that's needed to crew one vehicle, no matter how many crew members that vehicle needs. So if you have like a small tank that needs only three guys, and then you put a bigger tank that needs six guys in there, it will, you won't need to uh, train any extra crew members, they will still all be there. So the crew slot holds as many crew members as whichever vehicle you put in needs. Also if it's a fighter like, fighter like here, which only has one pilot, that also applies. So if you have this one pilot crew, crew quote unquote, um, and put that into a tank, suddenly it will turn into a six people crew. So one slot uh, equals one crew. And um, the vehicles you have, you have to purchase them once, but you never get to sell them again. So it's unlike World of Tanks where you only have a limited amount of vehicles available and you have to sell vehicles as you progress through, um, through the tech tree. You will always keep your old tanks, you will always be able to go back and play lower tier and play with those tanks again and also crews that are trained to one tank they will retain their abilities with that tank forever. So as opposed to World of Tanks where you buy and sell and train and retrain um, crews and tanks you will never do that, you will just train or buy them once and keep them forever. So that's one important distinction that I think um, is kind of confusing in the beginning and it, it was confusing to me. And also all the nations are down here, like you can see there on the left there's Americans selected now, so all the, the crew slots fold out to the right of that. So if I want my German vehicles that are down here, I would click the German flag here, the German flag would move over and it would pop up all my German crew slots and so on. Um, oh, as for the crew slots, five crew slots you can get for the uh, in-game uh, game currency is Silver Lines, which is um, the non-premium currency. And beginning from the sixth crew slot on, you would have to pay uh, Golden Eagles, which that's a premium currency that's available for real money only, or for some rare events, but generally for real money. Uh, but I find that in general, five crew slots are more than enough. The only reason you could need more is when you're playing arcade, where you could use all your crew slots, and you tend to die a lot, which better players tend not to, and I... I rarely ever use up all my five slots, maybe like in 10% of the battles, if I even play arcade. So one more difference in terms of ground forces, uh, as far as the crew slots are concerned, is that in simulator battles, you get to choose one vehicle, and you get two spawns for that vehicle, and that's it. So it doesn't matter what you have in the other crew slots here. If I have the Chaffee selected as I queue up, I will only have the Chaffee variable in the fight, and there will not be any other vehicles for me to choose from. I will get two spawns in that chaffy. When those two spawns are used up, I'm going to be out of the fight. I can be watching or exiting. And the vehicle will also, as opposed to World of Tanks, not be locked until the battle is over. The vehicle will be available for the next fight right away. With some small um, exclusion of that, if you die very, very quickly, the vehicle might be locked for a minute or two. But in general, if you 
play reasonably well, the vehicle will be available for the next battle right after that. So that's simulator battles at crew, um, crew slots. In realistic battles, you have a spawn point system where every um, vehicle is worth a certain amount of spawn points. You start with enough spawn points to spawn in one tank or one artillery piece or uh, anti-air artillery. Not enough for, for an airplane. And as, as you get experience and s score points in the battle by damaging tanks, taking fire, getting assists, all these things, you accumulate more spawn points. And um, with like one kill, usually you will have enough spawn points for one more tank spawn. And with a kill and assist, you'll have enough for an airplane spawn and so on and so forth. So if you perform well with your first vehicle, you will usually be able to bring three or four vehicles into the fight total. If you're really good, you might be able to bring all the five that I have here now, or if you have more crew slots, even more. In arcade, um, I think I've, it's been a long it's a long time since I've played arcade, but I, in arcade, I think it is the way that it is in in airplanes arcade that you get to play with all the vehicles and all your crew slots, um, independent from your performance on the field. So if you have five crew slots, you will get five spawns. You will get to play all those five vehicles, which also means that, and that's a general rule that applies to um, I think all the modes is that you have to pay attention to what vehicles you have in your lineup total so that even if like right now in simulator ba battle I have the M24 Chaffee selected which has a battle rating of 3.7 which battle rating is the, um, the relevant input to the matchmaker that determines your matchmaking so uh, my battle rating here with the Chaffee is 3.7 but I have other vehicles in here too, which if I'm in, uh, definitely if I'm in, in realistic battles or in arcade battles where I could spawn the other vehicles as well, it will take the entire lineup into account. It will my, uh, the matchmaker will do the matchmaking making based on the highest battle rating that I have in here, which in this case here would be the M4A176 millimeter with a battle rating of 5.0, just like the Jumbo Sherman and the M6A1 here. So in simulator battle, uh, in realistic battle, sorry, even though I have the M24 selected, since I could choose from all those vehicles later in the fight, or even at the beginning of the fight, the, battle, the matchmaking will refer to the highest tier vehicle that I have in the lineup. And there we go, now we have a fight. I was just about to say I'm going to stop queuing here since this is taking way too long, but now we actually have a fight on the Poland map, which is the small part in the middle here is a lake. There is um, slightly a, s a hill here on the on the south side, which looks into the city, and the city in the north, at the north of the lake. So I usually will um, go into the city with a chaffy because it allows me to use maneuverability favorably because the um, all the open areas around the city are fairly large visibility, and Germans, which I'm expecting to fight against, have the have the gun performance um, advantage here and I'm trying to negate that but uh, since I just saw that the only cap point here is in this game located on the south side of the lake I'm not going to go into the city I'm actually going to go to the south side and try to stay in the back there and um, try to only engage targets of opportunity and try to only engage targets that do not have me spotted yet and I'm probably going to try to go to a little farmhouse that's off there in the distance which I'm not sure if I can spot it just yet to remember it though so I'm going to go there, that's the cap circle right there, I'm going to have to evade that friendly Sherman so um, I'm going to try to, even though I'm going to be first first in contact if I want to, I'm going to try to not be that but be take cover behind that house and um, there it is, and try to far tar find targets that are unaware of me and stay hidden for a little while. Um, so yeah, one thing I want to say also about simulator battles, as um, opposed to the other modes, you cannot zoom out from your tank, you cannot have any kind of external view, you're limited to basically the commander's hatch view of your tank here, so that your visibility is pretty close to what a commander would have in real life. That will stay even when you're under fire and the commander will not get shot even though shells might hit the top of the tank where he pops out. So that the realism is uh, curved as far as that goes. 
but definitely you cannot uh, get a get better better visibility than than just by just looking around. That's all you get, and you have to make do with what you get here. Because you can can of course still zoom in through the gunner view and basically take the gunner's point of view here. But that's it. So I have several targets here. I see. I saw two tank destroyers and two or three medium tanks, which are probably going to be looking to engage or guys capping A, but I will try to not engage those and not make myself visible. Just going to take a quick peek if I can see any of them, but it seems like I can't. The haze is too strong. So that's a slight advantage for me as an American. And there's someone really close who might not have noticed me because he might be focused on the guys in cap, but he's hidden behind the ridge line. I can just barely see him probably, and I, I don't expect him to be able to shoot at me. What I can do is I can put artillery on him. That's what I'll do. Which will also help me to locate him. Be able to do that because someone's flanking me to my south side, and that should be open terrain. So if I see, I can I'll see if I can get a shot at that guy. He might also still be hidden behind the ridge line. Oh, but there I saw. Okay, there he was. That was one guy. There's no one there. There he is. I see him. Expecting that to be 400 meters, and it was. Direct hit on the first shot. And there we go. Amorak hit. Straight out. Blew his turret off. Big ball of fire. That is why being able to get the first shot off is so important. He never even was able to fire back. Uh, the tank destroyer is spot in the distance, which I cannot see yet. Which many people complain about this mechanic. Oh, there he is. He's just dragging a tree, tree along. But I think it's okay because your crew will actually spot things that you will yourself might not spot. So I'm okay with that. That hit him in the rear and damaged his engine. Did not kill the engine though. So that was 600 meters. He might have rain, might have being, might be aiming at me. Yep he is. So I gotta pull back here. And he's accelerating my position. I'm going to just put reposition slightly and just hope because I prefer getting hit by artillery to getting hit by his gun. Okay, I have my own artillery available now. I'm going to hit those two guys in the south I spotted before. All these guys here in the north seem to be hidden behind the ridge line. So that maybe I s one of my crew members is spotting just the top of the turret or something like that. But I can't really see them and I'm sure I cannot reliably hit them, nor can they hit me, I hope. So I will ignore those for now and go back to engaging the targets in the south. Which that chaff is blocking the edge here. Taking my previous spot. Since we did take the point and we are constantly winning on tickets, gaining on tickets, I don't see any reason to engage the guys approaching the point right now. There's a target on the right there. spot just yet. There he is, crossing over quickly. He should be about 400 meters, so I'm going to try to give that a shot. That's the stug I engaged before. And that was a nice hit right in the side. Not enough to kill him, but definitely enough to put a good amount of damage on him. And he's hidden behind the ridge line now, so I'm thinking the south is probably clear. So I'm going to move towards the south and try to flank these guys. Chaffee has, does have some decent gun stabilization, so I can try a shot in the move. I 
going to try to get behind these guys, which are all engaged to their front, so they should be um, pretty well distracted. Also, this uh, should have a slight height advantage here, so uh, I can probably shoot at people behind the ridge line there. A lot of targets should pop up as soon as I look over this here. Definitely at least one there. Should be on the plane. There's one. Should be a good hit to the side if I hit that. And he's already dead. Okay. More targets to the north. There's one. Pad three. Should be 600 meters, I think. And it was. That took out two of his crew members. Pull back a little bit. Foliage is in the way quite a bit. Okay, that's another one. And I'm taking fire. And I also got my driver wounded, so that means I cannot maneuver for a couple seconds. Still driver unconscious again, so that guy's got me ranged pretty well. Seems like also my engine's out, so I'm going to try to repair, which this is probably going to be the end of me. But we've driven the Germans back pretty far, so I think this battle is going quite well. So we're a little over 800 now. It might have been, that guy might have been dead, or I might have just hit the ground in front of him, I'm not sure. My artillery is also up, but I do not have any targets in range. Repairs are still ongoing, still 30 seconds, so as you can see the repairs take a lot longer than World of Tanks too. That guy also just died. That's one target way far. It's gonna be maybe like a good thousand meter shot, I'm gonna try this. And I actually hit him in the suspension, so it was a little bit over a thousand. Maybe you're almost 1200, but he's closing in. I'll try to align him with the lead. Also it seems my loader is hurt because my loading time has been greatly increased here. We're trying an 1100 meter shot. That was over. So it might be because of gun inaccuracy or it might be because 1100 is actually too far. I'm going to try like a little bit over a thousand with the next shot. He's taking a lot of fire. They're nice and stationary. That was a hit, but it didn't really damage anything. Attack destroyer there. That might be give me a couple of good shots at at his side, maybe. Or maybe at this range I might even be coming in from the top. So I'm assuming a thousand meters. Nope, thousand's slightly too far. Or something like eight fifty, nine hundred. I'm also repaired. I'm kind of contemplating driving in at them because I have not done a whole lot of damage yet. And the battle is about to be over. That was a good hit, so it should at least give me a kill assist once that guy dies. And I also want to get in range of my artillery. Yep, I got the kill assist there. That guy far here is still active. And he just died. I'm going to swing to the north and hope I can get at least like a little bit of hits in with artillery on those remaining guys there. Lake's already in the way. I wonder if I can visually spot anyone. Is that someone there? It looks like it. Yes, it is. Okay. Yep, 700 is way too far. It's a little under 600. I'm taking fire probably from the right. At this range, my armor might actually hold up though. I'm slightly hidden behind the ridge line here. That guy's on fire. He's not going to last very long. And I guess something killed my crew. That was slightly glitchy because I didn't hear any explosion there. 
But there you go, that's one fight in the Chaffee. With a little explanation up front about the uh, all the mechanics in War Thunder as opposed to World Attacks. And as you can see in this not great fight, I um, had 6000 XP towards the M41, which has a total research requirement of 100,000, as you can see on right below the uh, photo up there. So that's 1 16th of research for the M41. So on average, like 16 wins with very mediocre performance like I had here will get you the M41, which is, uh, as you know, like a pretty late tier vehicle. Which that does, however, um, come with me having premium. 14 days left. I, ha I actually bought like one year of premium when it was on sale for half off for, I think, something like $50 for a whole year of premium. And I do have a talisman on my chaffee which a talisman is basically a way to turn any tank that you own and that you enjoy driving into a premium tank as far as XP gain goes. It does not improve the um, the, the currency, the silver line gains, but it does more th slightly more than double for many tanks the XP gain on it. So, um, and that was, I think, something like the equivalent of five to ten dollars. So it's really not expensive, especially since you get to choose the tank that you like to play the most, which in my case here is the Chaffee on, on the American tank line, and turn that into a premium. So obviously there are like two boosts to that to that um, research here, but getting but getting an enemy uh, and then uh, getting an, an upgraded tank like that, a pretty high tier tank like the M41 Walker Bulldog, within something like 16 or 20 fights, I find that is a really very short grind. I cannot understand anybody complaining about a long grind in War Thunder, especially when you're used to the grind times in World of Tanks, which were at, like, it's kind of a long ago that I played myself, but as I remember, getting something like the Walker Bull like in World of Tanks will probably require more like 50, 60, 70 battles, I'm assuming. And also, I feel like um, that your XP gain in the battles here in War, War Thunder is much more dependent on your actual performance in the battle than on just winning or losing the fight. So if you get a good amount of kills, a good amount of assists, you will still get decent XP even if your game, even if your team does not win the game for you. So I feel that well, here, like I said, 16 battles, 16 wins here, so let's assume half wins, half losses, that would be 24 battles to research this tanks as opposed to probably some like 60 or 70 in World of Tanks. So I'd say maybe that might be a fairly accurate representation of grind times in War Thunder probably being about one third of the grind times in World of Tanks. Given that you do, un however, earn a little less um, serval lines, then you need to buy all the later tier tanks. So it's usually a good idea to fly a couple of plane, plane battles here and there because the silver line gain in plane battles, just for simple, ar simple arcade fights there, is a good amount higher and usually one plane battle which of about equal length like 15 minutes will net you something like 20 to 30 thousand silver lines with premium or like maybe 15 thousand without premium so um, doing that to supplement your income will usually be able to make you able to progress through the research tree with without much delay uh, caused by not having enough silver lines all right so um that concludes my little Chaffee Simulator battle and War Thunder overview. I hope you enjoyed it. Have a good one. Wonko out.